Hello everyone, Kerry the Crafter here, that's C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and we're here with another one of those videos on what to do with the 12 by 12. Now, this idea, not mine at all. I saw this first by Gerlo Gustinelli in December 2021, and it wasn't her idea either. She couldn't find, however, the original video that inspired her, but she did say that it wasn't her idea, and this is what we're making. It's like a multi-tuck zigzag pocket thingy. I, I don't know. I don't know what Gail called it. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it. Um, although Gail did take it another step and actually instead of just being a tuck spot she actually made it into something else as well. And I'll go through the variations of what Gail did and I've actually tweaked it even further myself um, in the making. So we'll look at that later anyway. So let's look at how to make one of these. Then I can explain how we'd use one of these and then I can show you how I will tweak it into another way. So, right, let's take this out of the way. So we have a 12 by 12. Now, if I was gonna recommend any sort of 12 by 12, I would say try and find a 12 by 12 that's non-directional. Or if it does have wording on it, know that, what because you make two out of one 12 by 12 square. Um, one of them is the wording is going to be upside down. So just be aware that could be something that you may not want to do, but you can always decorate it. Gail goes more into that than I'm going to. So I'm going to take myself a ruler and I'm going to grab myself a pencil, which I should have pulled out earlier on and I can't find. Um, where's my pencil gone? I can't find a pencil. We're going to use a pen. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up five inches from the bottom. Um, is it eight? No, it's four inches from the bottom. So four inches from the bottom and I'm going to make a mark. So that means I've got four inches and that is eight inches because obviously it's a 12 inch. And I'm going to make a four inch mark from the top here. So that's four inches there, which leaves us eight. So that's four inches, eight inches. That's four inches, eight inches. Now. Later on, I'm going to explain you can make this shorter. If you wish to make it shorter because your signature is not as tall, you can make that five inches and that seven inches, that five inches and that seven inches. You'll see as I do it what I'm talking about when we get there, okay? Let's put that by. Now, um, I don't have a guillotine that this is going to fit within, so I'm going to go to my favorite bit of equipment, just a normal sharp knife. So I'm going to put my metal ruler across the two lines, uh, the two marks, and I'm going to cut a diagonal. Now some trimmers this will fit into, the one I've got it doesn't. There you go, I've just cut straight the way through that. So right, it's a very very quick make this one. It's what you do with the bits afterwards that are the things that are clever, right? So this is Stamperia paper, if I didn't say that before. So now we've got two pieces. The side is four inches and this side is eight inches. Depending on which direction you use it in, doesn't matter to me. So I'm now gonna bring in my scoreboard. Now, if you don't have a scoreboard, you can score using a bone folder and maybe put the card on to maybe a bit of fun foam or something, put a ruler down and run a groove down. You can do that, but I think a lot of us do have um, scoreboards. So right now we're going to come in and we're going to make a score at three inches, six inches and nine inches. So basically dividing this into four. So that's three inches and six inches and nine inches. I'm going to do the other one now. I'm going to choose to do the other one the other way around so that I've got two different looks. So that's three inches, six inches, and nine inches. Okay, let's take the scoreboard out of the way, but hang on to my bone folder. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold where the score lines are. That's one fold, two fold, three fold. Now with this one I want the pink on the outside, so I'm going to one fold, two fold, three fold. And because you're using double-sided papers or cardstock, 
you're always going to find that they're going to be complementary colours and finishes to each other. So that's as far as we go with that. Now the next stage, I'm going to leave one to one side because I'm going to talk about that one because it's a variation that Gail did. So now I'm just going to pull in some... I'm using Art Glitter Glue here. You can use whichever glue you have faith in or you feel you want to use for this project. So line the glue down there and a line of glue across the bottom. Press that down again where this top piece is. Line of glue down there. Line of glue across the bottom. And then I'm going to turn it half a turn and I'm going to put a line of glue down the last side and across the bottom one more time. So there you go. Now I tend to use bulldog clips as you know. I like even though <coughs> oh excuse me. Even though um our glitter glue glues almost immediately, I like to clip things just to make sure they're fully in contact. I would hate to give someone a journal and hear later they came unglued. So now with this one, which is the variation. I'm going to talk you, I'm going to do it and then talk you through it. So where you have this book area, turn it over and glue this bit down and across the bottom and then open it up again and I'm going to do down here and across the bottom. So basically we're not doing the final stage. We want to leave this so it opens up. So once again, I'm going to put the Bulldog Clips on and then I'll show you some I made earlier on just so I can explain why we did that and what we can do with what we've got in front of us. And then we'll go on and see if I can decorate a couple of these up for you and show you a couple of alternatives of my own. Right, that'll hold it all nicely in place. Don't know what I'd do if it wasn't for a Bulldog Clip. Okay, top on the art littler. I can do it without stabbing myself. There you go. So let's have a look at the original. This is the original that Gail said someone made and she saw. Okay, now the th good thing about this is you've got a tuck spot there, you've got a tuck pocket there, you've got a tuck pocket there. Now, if I bring in um a signature. If I was to put this on a page, I could glue it down there, glue it across there, glue it there, then I'd have one pocket, two pocket, three pocket, and have a fourth pocket at the top. I could just glue it down that side and that side, and then I'd have a big tuck space. I could glue it along there, all the way there, there, have a tuck space there as well. If I wanted, so one we're talking about, um, once I've done that, then it's up to me what I do from there. Now, as you do the opposite sides, you're going to find they're going to have, um, the angles are going to go opposite. So you could effectively do them off the opposite pages. Now, the other one that Gail did, Gail did this version, which was her twist on it, where it opened up. I'm going to show you how I put that in anyway. So again, you could put that on the page. You could glue it down there, glue it there, glue it there. So you'd have one tuck there, two tuck there you'd have a tuck in here or a pocket and then this would open for writing space and then what Gail did is Gail actually closed it with um, a paper clip I like to use these little the little bulldog clips so we're going to regenerate those ideas but then I'm going to show you a couple of tweaks along the way that I did to make them slightly different and maybe make them more my own so those are the two that Gail did um, now, as you remember, I said the measurement was four inches from the top and four inches from the bottom. However, as you can see, this is a standard signature, which means this is eight inches tall. Maybe I don't want it eight inches tall. I can, if I make those measurements five inches, this is what it looks like if you cut it at five inches. What it does is it compresses the gaps here for your pockets. You still have the pockets as you did on the other one, although what you've got this time is it's it's an inch shorter. 
Okay, so let me just see if I can explain that one more time. When you have your square, let's just pull in a pad. Okay, when you have your square, originally the measurement was four inches from there, four inches from there, and cut across. If you do five inches from there, five inches from there, and cut across, you'll end up with that version compared to the original version, which is an inch taller. Okay, hopefully I haven't muddied the waters and confused everyone with my rambling explanations, but there you go. Hopefully that's all done and dusted. So let's put those to one side. I do have another use for the pocket one, which I'll show, um, the fold one, which I'll show you anyway. So let's pull the original one back out. Now you could, if you chose, if you were making this and this was too tall no matter what, but you like this, you could always, of course, just cut that off at the bottom. Okay. Now, this is the original version. Again, pocket, pocket, pocket. And as we've already discussed, you can put it on a page and it can be a tuck spot as well there. If you put it on the opposite page, it's a tuck spot in there. Now, as far as decorating this up, it's really easy. You could just take something really simple. Let's see, what have I got on the go here? Um, let's, I've got one of those, right, I'll take one of those. And let's see, I've got, I've got some Tracy Fox labels in here. Let's just grab a generic label out of here. Let's pop that on there. Just to show you how simple they are to finish off. So you don't need to put anything on there at all. The papers are pretty enough as they are, but you might want to. I mean, you might want to try and tie in the theme a little bit with whatever you're doing on that day. I quite like that on there. Let's just put a bit of vintage photo around this. This is um, a digital download from Tracy Fox. I believe it's called Field Notes Labels or Specimen Labels, something like that. Tracy Fox does some great labels. Um, and I'd look her up if I was you. I will try and remember to put a link in my description box. If you look there, there's a little gravy. You click on that, the description will come down. I will try and put the link to Gail's original video in there, if I can find it after all this time. And I'll also try and put a link to this as well, um, that label. This was actually just a topper I made myself. So that's that's the original. So let's go on to the one that I, I class as um, more of a writing spot. Now, before I put in this bit, I wanted to show you something else clever you could do with this as well. You could wrap this around a page. So what you could do is you could put this in here and glue it along here and then you'd have a tuck. And on the other side, you'd also have a tuck, but you'd have a tuck with a pocket in it. Just a thought, another way of using that. Also, there seems to be quite a bit of real estate at the bottom here. I could, if I chose, make a pocket to fit onto there. And that's just a bit of scrap card that I've got hanging around. And therefore I'd have a pocket, a pocket, another pocket, and I'd have a journaling spot in there as well. So that's just, just another idea, guys. So just something I was thinking of earlier on. So things to think about when you're doing this. Let's put the top on that glue. So I've got myself a piece of coffee dyed paper. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to fold this coffee dyed paper in half, right down the middle. And I'm gonna pop that in there. Now what I want to do is I'm gonna, if I could find my pencil, I'd be a very happy camper, but I can't. So I'll put it down somewhere. So I'm gonna use a pen here and I'm just gonna pull a line across there. Just give myself a mark and I'm going to draw a line across here just to give myself a mark. Now the reason I'm putting that line in there is if I don't have that diagonal line I won't actually be able to have a triangular shape on the back. So I'm going to come in, I like to use my tear ruler for this, so I'm going to tear on... Why can I not do this? I think I'm trying to tear from a corner when that's a bad idea, I need to tear from an open edge. There you go. So that goes in the bin. Right, where's my line for the bottom? I know I put one in, there it is. 
So, and just slightly up from the line at the bottom, that goes in my scrap box. Now, when I put this in place, it will only be visible when this is open, which is what I wanted. So I'm going to come in with a bit of a gluing moment and just glue that down. I'm, I'm going to use the loose stick for it. It doesn't need to be a huge, huge process. It's not going anywhere. I'll make a mess of that one, Griffiths. Oh, and I've stuck it to another sticky glue page. How do I feel this is not going the way I wanted it to go today? There you go. Right. So let's bring that in. Sit that in there. Where's my scraper gone? There you go. Just smooth that down. Smooth that down. Make sure it goes right into the crease. A bit of pressing the outside, make sure it doesn't stick to itself. So there you go. So now it's like a hidden journaling spot. So you only know it when you open it up. You haven't got this corner showing. So there you go. So that's how I've done that. Now something else I thought would be really nice is if I was to put this into a journal. Yes, I could use a paper clip like Gail did, but I thought I'm missing an opportunity here. So what I did was. I actually got myself one of these little clips and I put a an dangle on it. So let's see if I can get this onto the page. So I'm pretending I've glued this onto the page. And then what I've done is, as I've done that, to clip it closed. Then when I have my journal, I have a dangle on the edge of my journal. Plus I have that there and this would be stuck down. So I've got a tuck spot there, a pocket, a pocket. And then when I take this off, I have a journaling space in the middle. So that's just another way to use up some of those squares of journaling pads, the 12 by 12s. Obviously you can decorate this. Let's see what I've got hanging around. Um, let's see. Is that a bit small, do you think? Actually, that's nice. So let's put that one on there. Let's not make the mistake I made before and put something onto a sticky glue paper. There's that glue stick on. So these are just really useful. This, I mean, you could really use up any of those spare 12 by 12s you got for this. And then once you've got that done and you've made these up, um, don't put the decoration on them. Leave, leave them unadorned. And then that way, when you're working on a project, you can just pick these up, put them in, and there you go, they're all ready to go. Let's see if I can just find another one of those little, let's just pull one of those out. There you go, that looks cute. And put a bit of glue on the back of that. There you go. So I can't remember, as I said, what Gail called these. Um, I'll try and remember to look look up her video if I can find it. I know it's December 2021. I just can't remember exactly what the title was. So I will try and title my one similar to hers. So there you go. So that's that's my twist on it, adding a dangle. Um, that's the original decorated up. Um, this was the shorter version, don't forget. And that was where I cut it at five instead of four. And these are the originals that Gail made. Um, or based on Gale. So hopefully that was a nice little make for you, something you enjoyed seeing. If you did, this is me, I'm Kerry the Crafter, and this is where you find me. Like me, subscribe to me, thumbs up. Any positive comments are always welcome. And I'm Kerry, C-E-R-I, The Crafter, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.